Why did God command Israel to make sacrifices? Why did he ask Israel to smear blood on the doorpost? And what does the blood symbolize? What do the scriptures say about this? Let us dig in and see. In the past, I used to spend a lot of time in the Far East. Yeah? I practiced meditation, yoga, and I dealt with the different Asian teachings. And during my stay in the East, I experienced a, spirit, a spiritual revelation that changed my life. I suddenly understood so many things. My essence as a Jew was revealed to me. Truth was revealed to me that for some reason was hidden from us. And that pushed me to open and read the Bible. Do you know that God explains to us in the Bible that his people are perishing for lack of knowledge? When I start reading the Bible, I saw that everything is written, that nothing is new. I discovered between the word a stunning truth. I find beautiful logic in the Bible. All that was hidden in the word simply opened before me. And I realized that when we read the Bible directly and not looking for answers in all kinds of interpretation, God simply opened our eyes. Not that I don't respect rabbis or different commentators. God forbid, bless them. But man is a limited creature, yeah? and it doesn't matter how smart or talented he is. When we read directly from the Bible, in his word, God begins to work in us. Then we discover and experience a truth that is not a religion, and we find out that God does exist. He demonstrates his wonderful love to us. And he revealed to us his perfect plan of salvation that he has yeah, for us. I realized that to see the truth for myself, to experience God and to feel him close to me, I will have to go directly into his word, into the Bible. I felt like a thirsty play, a person yeah, sitting on the bank of the river. And to quench my thirst, I have to drink of the water. It won't help me if someone else drinks in my place. The Torah, the Bible, is like a spring of living water. One has to get into it and drink. The fact that I have a spring beside me will not save my life, unless I will take off the water and drink. The Bible is a gift from heaven. It's a guidebook, a roadmap, a way from the world of darkness to the world of light. It serves as a guide that leads us from, from this world back home to our Heavenly Father, the way to salvation. Amen. When we see God and His truth, He shows us the way. And not just this, He holds us by the hand and, and directs us. He teaches us and loves us, and we feel and experience how wonderful He is. Blessed be His name. King Solomon wrote that God hides things in the Bible, and it is up to us to seek and discover them. God truly wished that we would really want to find him and his truth. He wants us to, to care, to, to search, to investigate. And where should we investigate? It must be in his word, in the Bible. And those who seek him, find. When I start reading, I find throughout the entire way, in fact, from the beginning, that God has prepared us, the people of Israel, to accept his truth, his plan. From the very beginning, we see that God promised, already then, in the Garden of Eden, that he will send us a savior. When Adam and Eve betrayed God in the Garden, already then, God promised that one will come from the seed of the woman who will destroy the enemy and will save us. God has promised us a savior, a messiah. Later, all throughout the Bible, we see that God fulfills his promise to destroy the seed of Satan from the world and from all humanity. He sent us through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, through King David, the promised seed. From the seed of the woman, God sent us a savior. God gave us the Torah, and in it, he shows us the way from slavery to freedom. He sent us the Bible as a road sign to lead us back home, back to him. We must read and trust that the faithful God will open our eyes yeah, to see his truth. So let us investigate and find out together what does God tell us in the scriptures. 
What is his plan for us? What do the prophet tell us? Who is our Messiah? Let us put all fear aside and trust in God. When I started reading the Bible, I was very surprised to find out that the scripture always referred to God in, pl in plurality. Just as it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. I discovered that the prophet, King David, and even Moses, they prophesy about the Messiah. And that even Daniel indicated the time of his coming. I saw, I saw the atoning plan of God that intended to save his beloved children. I saw how all the prophecies in the Bible lead us as a road sign to our salvation and to the identity of the Messiah. In the Bible, we see how God brought his people out of slavery, out of the world of darkness, and led them through the wilderness to the promised land. During these 40 years in the wilderness, God guided his people with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God fed them bread and meat from heaven. He quenched their thirst with, with water from the rock. Amazing. He protected them from their enemy and, and, and fought for them. God took them by the hand to the promised land. And so it is also today. God has never changed. If God had not been until today with us, we would have not existed. God is still with us, yeah, protecting us. Yeah? And in everything he does, he directs us straight into his arm through the plan of salvation he has for us. Blessed be his name. To my surprise, I also saw in the Bible that, he, that the, the approach to God passes only through the blood. I realized that the blood, blood has a deep meaning and that all humanity depends on it. From the beginning, we see that God accepted Abel's offering, yeah, but rejected Cain's offering. Why? Abel brought the sacrifice from the flock, but Cain from the fruit of the earth. God rejected Cain's offering because it was worthless in his eyes. It was bloodless, lifeless. In the book of Leviticus, it is written that life is in the blood. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an aton atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement uh, for the soul. God says, only the blood can atone for our sin. We also see that in Noah's time, we know that God destroyed the world and, you, and humanity in a in the flood because of sin. And then it all started again in a land washed by water. And what was Noah's first act when he came out of the ark? He offered a sacrifice to God. He shed blood on the earth, which was just washed, been washed, yet yeah, to purify her. And when God made the covenant with Abraham, this too happened through the shedding of blood. And through the blood, Abraham entered into a relationship with God. Then we see that when Abraham agreed to offer his son Isaac yeah, as a sacrifice to God on the altar, he declared that God himself will provide the lamb. And in this way, Abraham actually revealed to us the divine plan to come. And instead of, instead of Isaac's blood, the blood of the ram was shed. The motif of blood is, is, is repeated throughout the Bible. And we see that from Jacob and his sons arose the people of Israel and Egypt, and that Israel was enslaved to Egypt. And salvation from slavery in Egypt was also realized only through the blood. The blood that the Israelites smeared on the doorposts as God commanded them. God said to his people, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. God teaches us again and again that forgiveness of sin is only through the blood. As it is written, soul for soul, life for a life. This is the law of God. Only the blood can be used as an atonement. Nothing else can atone for our sin. This is what the Bible tells us. You know, in Egypt, God passed over all the houses with blood. So let us think for a moment. When God visited the home of the Israelites, did he ask them any questions? 
Did you do a good deed today? Are you living a kosher life? Or did you keep all the commandments? No, he did not ask any question. He checked only for one thing. Is there blood on the doorpost? If there was blood on the house, the house was safe. And if there was no blood, death befell that house without asking any question. The people of Israel continued from e Egypt to the promised land. They arrived to Sinai, and there God gave them the Torah. The covenant, this covenant too would have not taken place without bloodshed. It is written in the book of Exodus that, when Mo, that Moses threw blood on the altar and on the people, and he said, here is the blood of the covenant which God has made with you. The blood gives val validity yeah? and strength to the covenant. And it allows men to enter into the presence of God. Without the blood, a sinner has no access to the Holy God. After the covenant was made at Mount Sinai, God commanded the Israelites to build the tabernacle. He said to the people, make me a tabernacle that I may dwell uh, with you. God himself ordered the way and the manner of, of service in, in the tabernacle. And he commanded sacrifices to be made. God teaches us that the blood and that the sacrifices in the temple are the only way for the people to approach him, to enter into the presence of God. And when the people of Israel dwelt in the promised land, they made sacrifices and sprinkled blood on the altar continually. From morning to evening, they offered sacrifices and shed blood endlessly. In the book of Leviticus, God says to Moses to say to the people of Israel, when you bring a sacrifice to God, take it from the herd, a male without blemish, then bring it to the entrance of the tabernacle so that he may be accepted before God. It says, lay your hand on the head of the burnt offering on the lamb, and God will accept the death of the lamb in your place to purify you, and you will be forgiven. It says, that this act will purify the people and they will be forgiven. God himself said, bring the sacrifice to be accepted by God. And God accepts the death of the sacrifices, of the sacrifice in our place to cleanse us and we will be forgiven. Hallelujah. This teaches us that without the atoning lamb, yeah, we have no forgiveness. For it is written, the wage the wages of sin is death. The Bible shows us that the way to connect with God, the way back to God is only through the blood. And in this way, it continued for 1,500 years. Blood was shed endlessly. But this bloodshed did not stop the sins, and it went on and on and on. And to put an end to it, once and for all, God sent us the perfect sacrifice. God sent us Islam, the Passover lamb. God sent us the Messiah and poured out his holy, sinless blood on the altar. Why is blood needed? Because only the blood can pay the price of sin. We must understand that only in the blood there is redemption. Yeah? And without it, there is only guilt and death. From the scripture, we learn that all of God's children are sinners. You know, as Job tells us, what is man that he should be clean? And he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous. And King David tells us, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And the law of God tells us that the wage of sin is death. But God's gift is eternal life in the Messiah. God loves us with eternal love. He does not want us to perish. God loves us in such a way that we cannot even imagine far beyond our understanding. To allow his children to return to him, God made the way, yeah, the way of the blood, life for life. God gave us a way through the pure blood of the Messiah, Yeshua. By the shedding of the blood of the Messiah, we received new life. His blood paid for our sin. 
His blood frees us from sin and death. God guides us into this understanding through the scriptures. Just as the Passover sacrifice gave us his life when he died in our place, so also the Messiah gave us his life. It is very simple. The Messiah died in our place. And the life of the Messiah is life with God. Therefore, when Messiah gives us his life, we get back life with God. <laughs> he just switched places with us. He took our punishment upon himself, our death. And he gave us his place with God by his side. It is incredible what God has done for us. Blessed be his name. Just as the blood of the Passover sacrifice protected all those who took refuge under it, under, under it, yes, from death and penalty, in the same way, the blood of the Messiah protects all those who take refuge in him. King David warns us. He wrote in Psalm, yeah, he says, kiss the son so that you will not perish, yeah? He says, kiss the son so that he will not get angry, otherwise you will be destroyed. Blessed those who take refuge in him. The New Testament tells us that when the Messiah Yeshua died, the veil in the temple was torn in two. The veil that separated God and man was torn into two. The curtain that separated man and God was removed. The Messiah Yeshua opened the way back to God. Three days after the death of the Messiah, Yeshua was resurrected. And after the resurrection of the Messiah, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, just as Daniel prophesied. In the New Testament, it is written, For God so loved the world, so loved the world, that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God's only son, upon which King David wrote, where he warned, Wow to those who do not take refuge in the son. The New Testament tells us that when John the Baptist saw Yeshua the Messiah for the first time, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He says, In his blood and not in the blood of calves, he entered once and for all into the Holy of Holies and got for us eternal redemption. The Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, Son of David, the Son of God, came into the world to give us life through his death. Through the blood that he shed for us and gave us eternal life. And we, eh, you know, as we are told in Isaiah 53, he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. And we treated him uh, like he was stricken and afflicted by God. But he was wounded for our crimes and because of our sin he was crushed. He was punished so that we would have peace. And with his wounds, we are held. The shedding of the blood of the Messiah was necessary to give us life. At the last Passover meal of Yeshua as a Jewish rabbi, yeah, before they killed him, we are told in the New Testament that Yeshua took the cup of the wine, he gave it to his disciple, and he said, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. The new covenant upon which Jeremiah spoke of. Behold, the days are coming, says, says my Lord, yeah? when I made a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I've made with, with the forefather on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. He goes on to say, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them. I will write it on the heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen. He continues and says, And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each bro uh, his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them, to the greatest, and I will forgive the iniquity, and I will remember the sins no more. Hallelujah. It is written in the New Testament. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. It was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become 
the children of God. God has promised to send us a clear sign to guide us in the identification of the Messiah. God said, I will give you a sign and a maiden will have a son. This maiden must be a virgin, otherwise there is no sign here. For after all, every maiden can bring sons into the world. It is written, the Lord will give us a sign and a maiden, a virgin, will bring forth the promised son. And his name will be Emmanuel, for God is with us. God is preparing us through his word to understand, uh, recognize, and accept the plan of salvation that he has planned for us. God gave us a sacrifice from himself, a sacrifice by which we can live forever. Hallelujah. God sent us the Messiah Yeshua, the Lamb of God. This truth is not, know, uh, not new uh, to Judaism. As we learn from the word of Rabbi Eliyahu Davidas, he said, For whosoever will not admit that the Messiah suffer for their iniquity, must endure and suffer for them himself. All who believe in him receive the right to live eternal life by his side. Wow. Will we decide to believe the scripture? Will we decide to listen to God? Will we decide to take refuge in the Son? Will we decide to break all the chain that bind us to the world of darkness? Will we decide to advance from the covenant of Moses, from the physical covenant to the spiritual covenant to the new covenant? Will we allow God to write his law on our heart? Will we now decide to listen to God and to enter through the only door which is sealed with the blood? The only door which the angel of death cannot touch because the blood of the lamb is upon it. The blood of the Passover lamb, the lamb of God. The blood of the Messiah who brought us salvation. The Messiah, Yeshua. Hallelujah. Let us advance from the physical covenant to the spiritual covenant. Through the blood that the Messiah shed for us. The Messiah, Yeshua, the son of David. Tell him. Say together with me. Our Heavenly Father, full of mercy, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, cover me with atoning blood. Cover me with the blood of the eternal Passover lamb, with the blood of the Messiah, and cleanse me from all in iniquity, from all impurity, so that I too may go through the veil. Hallelujah. Through the way that the Messiah opened for me, back to my Father in heaven. Say to him, Father, I thank you for your perfect plan. I thank you for opening my eyes. I thank you for sending me Yeshua, the Messiah. Yeshua, the Messiah, son of David, please forgive me. I confess that you have died for me and you took upon yourself all my sins and iniquity. I thank you for taking my place in death and you gave me a place by your side in heaven. You died for me, and after three days you rose again, and now I belong to you, for you have bought me with your blood. Thank you. Hallelujah. So until the next time when we will enter again into the scriptures and discover what God has hidden there for us, and together we will see that everything is written in the Bible, that the Messiah was supposed to come to us from the house of David, from Bethlehem. Together we will check all the prophecies in the Bible and let God show us only His truth. Join me in the following program and together we will see, feel and experience how good is our God. How wonderful He is. So let us get to know Him. We'll see you in the next program of Moment of Truth with Dalia. Bless you and Shalom.